Hey guys, this is Al from Laughing Jackal. I'm here today to show you a Let's Play video of our brand new Vita game, Flame Over. Very exciting. So uh, this is my first Let's Play video, so hopefully I don't make too much of a hash of it. Um, so yeah, Flame Over is a top-down sort of shooter, I guess, but instead of enemies and guns, we've got fires and water and extinguishers. So I can move my character around in this sort of top-down 3D environment with the left stick. The right stick, if I'm very gentle with it, I can slowly turn the camera to get a look around, or if I'm not so gentle, I can push it far left and right to get a really quick turnaround. Um, when I'm not using it to turn the camera, I can use the R button to shoot my hose and the L button to shoot my extinguisher, and while I'm doing those things, I can use the right stick to aim independent of movement like every other twin stick shooter out there. It's a good system, let's not mess with it. <laughs> Right, so you can see over here already I've refilled. Um, anything you can use in the game you use with the square button. We've got a nice little legend, so let's. You can see as I've shot water and foam, those meters in the bottom left, the white meter for the foam and the blue meter for the water, are falling. I can refill those at various places around the level, but this is the best place. It's an instant refill. I can reuse it as many times as I like, but I do have to come back to the exit to uh, use it. So, um, Flame Over is kind of based on roguelike principles despite being an action game, so you can see I can't see anything around me at the moment, I don't know what's going on. Um, the thermometer down there in the bottom left, just above the map, is increasing in height as I get near to where fires are, so that helps me to track them down. And because uh, the game's randomly generated, I don't know what's going to be through this door. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got a corridor, um, doesn't seem to be much fire around at the moment, but I'm sure there could well be. No, we're safe in this room. Uh, this door has a backdraft hazard on it, so let's make that safe. If I open that, it would um, take one of my hearts away instantly. So I'll use my axe, because this is a uh, fire door. You can see there's an axe on the front of it. I need to mash the square button to get through there. Now I can straight away get down to it, so you can see I can use my hose to put the fires out pretty effectively. Um, that was a fireball there that's just shot through the door and set fire to a stepladder, which is worrying, so let's deal with that. Everything in the game is made of different materials, and each material can attack you in a different way. So fabric, like you can see, makes a trail of fire, which can be pretty dangerous. We've also got um, paper and plants. There's another fabric fire there. Um, and something, generally speaking, will attack me every second or so. You can see this grey fire, that's particularly nasty, that is electrical fire. And that will constantly try and respawn fires around itself, if it can. Um, you can see it's not deadly to me at all. <coughs> Excuse me, on its own, but um, it can't be put out with a hose either. So it's kind of like a fire spawner, and you need to keep your eyes out for it because it won't damage you and tip you off. So let's use the extinguisher to put that out. Um, I can also look on my map by pressing select. I can see down here, right in the centre of the map, there there is a lightning bolt symbol. That room is a fuse board room or fuse box room, and I can go and use that to turn the power off. So let's go and do that now. Ooh, there's a wall of fire coming for me. You can see it's advanced through the room. It can't populate areas that have already been soaked, luckily for me, so I'd already made the room pretty safe by just sort of carpeting it in water. Right, okay, here is a fuse board room. Let's get these fires out and then all the fire, all the electrical fire in the level should now not be there anymore. Ah, here we go. So this is Miss Ion, one of our um, people to rescue in the game. She's unique because she will um, give you missions to do before she'll leave the level. Because I've not walked into the room, she won't take any damage just yet, so it gives me a chance to assess my move. If she gets killed by exposure to heat or fireballs, then I won't be able to rescue her, obviously, and I won't be able to complete my mission. And missions give me upgrade tokens, so I don't want her to die. So let's use the circle button and throw a water bomb in there and get it a bit safer. You can see there's a talk prompt there. I've made the room safe. She's no longer panicking. She's quite happy. Let's go and say hello. Hi Blaze, I'm Miss Ion. I lost my red bag. Could you find it? There's an upgrade token in it for you. I left it in a manager's office. Right, so let's use our awesome detective skills to look at what rooms kind of look like a manager's office. So this looks like a sort of server room to me, like a sort of back room. So it's not going to be in here. Yeah, a manager's office, so this is kind of a regular office. This could be a manager's office, looks kind of swanky. There's um, 
awards on shelves and sofas and what have you around here. Let's have a little search. So if I go up to uh, within uh, distance of a searchable object, then I'll get a prompt. This could be a manager's office too, actually. Can there? Looks pretty swanky. Tiger skin carpet. There we go. We found her red back. Lovely. So I should get a nice miss eye on complete or mission complete message now. There we go. Mission complete or miss eye on complete. And then she's left me a little upgrade token there, which I need to remember to pick up. So, right. Let's take her back to the fire exit. I've got her to follow me using uh, the X button, the cross button. I can hold it down and she'll stop following me, so I can leave her in safe places. But let's just get her back to the fire exit. You can see I've gained a minute there. I don't want to run out of time because then the Rookum Reaper chases me around, um, which is not fun. So let's get rid of that backdraft. And we're in a new room. You can see all those coins are coming through. I'm getting money there, which I can spend at the upgrade screen, or I can spend in the game on power-ups in the caretaker's shop. Uh, he'll be on the next level. It tends to go mission, shop, mission, shop, alternating. So uh, let's get this guy out of this room in case when I open a door a fireball comes through or something. I'll leave you there my friend, I'll see you in a minute. Right, so looks like both of these rooms are on fire. Let's hack through this door. Yep, I can keep this, this side's not on fire behind me so let's make sure it stays that way and keep it safe. That was easier than I thought it would be, that's great. Right, we're serious in here. Generally speaking, because um, of the way the fire attacks you, the, the more sort of sides you've got surrounded, then the more dangerous it's going to be. So these big rooms tend to be a real pain. You can see that fireball just hit me, and it's taken my health all the way down, but luckily I got out of the door just in time. So let's make the rest of this room, oh dear. So a fabric fireball came through, luckily it didn't set fire to anything. Let's try and keep things under control. Oh, crikey, there's a guy here who's almost dead already. Wow, okay, let's get him out of here as well. I like to have a room, a room's worth of buffer. So if the fire did come through the door, those guys wouldn't um, lose any health. Right, let's try and get around here. It's a big room this, isn't it? Looks like some sort of massive uh, meeting room. We've got quite a lot of um, detail in our environments. We've got thousands of polys per room and these were all been made by hand and then they're stitched together randomly. So all these little cups and little touches to try and make the game as quirky and sort of full of personality as we can. Um, and it gives the Infernal Industries building a little bit of character and hopefully makes it feel a bit more lived in than these little fellas. So yeah, you can see one of them's got less health than the other, he's probably hit by a fireball. They will very slowly gain health as they follow me, but I tend to prefer to leave them in a safe place. So there you go, there's three more minutes. I'll have a top up while I'm here. Right, so there's another fire. This could be the last room, is it? It might be, you know, there's three more rooms to sort out, so we're looking pretty good. Three stars. Haven't lost any health yet. Ah, in the top right corner of this room you can see a cat. So he will not give me time, but what he will give me is an extra heart, so I can get up to five hearts. I just shot down a fireball that's about to hit him, which would have been bad news. But luckily, I have honed my flame over skills over the last 18 months or so. <laughs> I managed to shoot that one down. Right, so this is a server room. This would have been full of electrical fire if I hadn't already turned the power off, so it's worth bearing that in mind. It's, it really is worth making a beeline for the, for the um, fuse board room and getting that electricity turned off as soon as you can. It's not as easy in some levels as it is in others, but um, I tend to make that my priority. But again, you don't have to do that, it's up to you. Right, so this last room didn't have any fire in it because the exit sign has come up. Excellent. Right, so I'll take you, sir, and this little cat. Come on then, little fella. Back to the exit. And you should see me get one minute of time and one extra heart up there in the top right corner. So let's have a look. Yep, four hearts. I don't need to refill before the end of the level because um, it refills automatically just as a little help when you get to the next level. But So yeah, that's um, flame over. That was the first level. Um, things get a lot more difficult as you go through the game and I think I might have made it look a little bit easier than what it is. Uh, it is a fiendishly difficult roguelike firefighting shoot -em up and we are very excited to share it with you. So hopefully there'll be more videos and stuff online soon. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.